Hello AOS fans, it's me Pete, and I'm here to give you another deck video this week. And this one, it's a spooky deck video. I'm playing the Thorns, and I'm playing against Robin's Grimwatch, because we figured we'd try and get two fairly Halloween-y warbands together to try and, you know, get a bit of the Halloween spirit going. Spirit, do you get it? Like it? Yeah. Anyway, so, what did I go for in my deck? I've mostly gone for sort of objective grabbing because I've just had so little chance to play objectives over the course of Nightfall that now it seems to be such de rigueur, I just really want to do as much as I can. So without further ado, let's crash on with what I've got. For my objectives, I do have the standard 12 objectives as always. I've got six surge cards in here. I want to try and get as many of them as possible. I've got some higher scoring cards as well, so I do have about 20 in total in glory, so I shouldn't do too badly. First one I've got is Swarming Spirits. Scrum easily two or more friendly fighters moves to Hex Occupy by Enemy Fighters. That should be fairly doable for me, and that's another that's an instant score. Take the City, scroll in phase if you hold all the objectives in one or more game boards. Well, I've got the numbers, so hopefully I should be able to do that. Then Treacherous Foe, scroll immediately if my warband makes a reaction. I've got several upgrades and ploys that have reactions on them, so hopefully I should be able to do that one. And then keep them guessing. I figure keep them guessing should be fairly po possible because we've got Varclav, which means I can use his push, I can do a move, I can do an attack, and I can do a charge. And then I have Master of Terrain. I figure there's a lot of lethal hexes bouncing around these days, and you can place one yourself now. So that should be actually fairly achievable. And then Deathly Clutches. This is from the, uh, the Powers Unbound pack. Scroll immediately when two or more friendly fires become inspired at the start of your activation. I've taken this one because I like the flavour of it. I don't know how easy it's going to be to score because you've got to use push moves. I do have several push cards and ways of moving people, so maybe that will be doable. We'll have to see. I've then got Choke Point. This one is one that you just wouldn't have taken ages ago, but with the bodies I've got rocking about now, I reckon Choke Point might be scorable. Score if you have all of the uh, No One's Territory hexes covered by a model of some kind. doesn't even have to be yours. And that's two glory, which isn't bad. I've then got Dug In. I do like Dug In. Dual card. Your warband holds three or more objectives at the start of the phase, and you have three or more objectives at the end of the phase. If I can get a Supremacy off in the previous round and have three of my guys standing on them to grab that and then pick up Duggan as well, I'll be laughing. It might be quite tough to pull off otherwise because you do need to be standing on three objectives at the start and at the end. And if you're not there at the start, then you're pretty much SOL. So I will have to try and bear that in mind. This is possibly the hardest of the cards for me to score. It's four glory though, so I figured it's, it's worth a shot. And then I have Path to Victory, scroll in phase if one or more any fighters was taken out, and I hold two objectives. Well, I should be able to hold two objectives pretty easy, and taking somebody out shouldn't be that hard to do. I then got Scrum, scroll immediately if four people are standing next to each other after an activation. Well, Robin's got a lot of fighters, so I might score it off the back of him doing it, but also I should be able to do that myself with Varclav's push ability to just shove everybody into a group first thing. Then Supremacy, an oldie but a goodie, you've got to take Supremacy, I think. Stand on three objectives, get three glory and Swift Capture. Score immediately, so another Surge card, if you hold one objective in your opponent's territory and one in your own territory. So those are my ploys. Like I said, I've got six Surges because you want as many Surge cards as you can get. No restricted cards in there at all though. And uh, yeah, a smattering of end phase cards and some slightly tougher cards, but you know what, I wanted to try and take as many newer objective type cards as I could really. So onto my gambits, and I've gone for an 11 card ploy, 11 card upgrade deck, so 22 cards overall. Normally I go for 10 and 10, I don't like having too many, but I just couldn't decide what I wanted to take out this time. So the first card I've got is Howling Vortex. For one Swirly, which is a little tougher to cast if she hasn't inspired, you can push everybody one hex, and that could be really handy with the lethal hexes bouncing around, or if Robin's jumping on a load of objectives and I want to get him off of them. And a Spectral Parry, put somebody on guard, Guard is much nicer these days, so that could come in very handy. And counter charge, first one of my reactions, which should help me with my other objectives. When he makes a charge move, I get to push one of my fighters three hexes and end up next to the enemy fighter. Gives me those assists on defense, also helps move some of my bodies up the field. And then mirror move, this could be handy if there's an attack, push back, and able to move someone up. Or if Robin's got some of his other cards which enable pushes, means I can then use mirror move to shunt my people forwards. Pit Trap next. Now this is the only restricted card I believe I took, and I figure the plus one damage could be handy. If I were to get rid of a card, I think this is the most likely one to get rid of, but sometimes, especially with the Queen pushing out three damage, adding another one in there from Pit Trap could be very useful. I've then got Sphere of Akshi, 
a nice range 4 attack there with just a lightning, 1 damage. Could be very helpful to pick somebody off who's already run through a lethal hex perhaps. And then unchecked energy. Pick a lethal hex, everybody standing on it or next to it you roll a dice for and on a hammer or crit they take 1 damage. Now with all the lethal hexes bouncing around that could be very useful. And then have inspired attack. Plus 1 dice, plus 1 damage for the next attack made by someone who's inspired. Well. My hope is that I can shunt somebody into position or shunt somebody from his side over to me so that I know they'll be inspired at the beginning of the round. I can then play that card, get the inspiration at the beginning of the turn and then attack and use it. And then have confusion, a standard I think when you're going for objectives. If Robin's staying on an objective and I want it, I can use confusion to shift him off. Then restless prize, I do like this card these days. Take an objective, you can shove it two hexes effectively. Great stuff, takes it away from Robin hopefully sticks under one of my fighters priceless and the last one sidestep a good old sidestep never did anybody any harm and it's very handy for jumping on objectives or shifting people into position so i've got a couple of spells in there which i don't normally take i've got a couple of reactions in there which will be helpful for my objectives those are my ploys i'm quite happy with them i'm not sure if i would take some of the attacky ploys out like pit trap and sphere of Akshi or inspired attack and maybe put in some more movementy ploys i don't know i could possibly do that and make the deck even more objective grabbing but i just want to try to take as many cards like i say that i haven't taken in ages so on to the upgrades this is what i'm going to spend all that glorious glory on that i've just won and the first one is Chill Touch. Rolls of dodges are no longer successes uh, for defence against this attack. It goes on a bog standard chain rolls, but you know what? Most of Robin's guys are rolling dodges, and I don't take my deck based on what Robin is playing, but at the same time, being able to eliminate dodges, and I have some people with cleave, that's going to be great. Next one is Creeping Terror. This is another reaction card. You can move through somebody, you can then make a reaction, roll a dice, and on a hammer or crit, they take one damage. Could be very handy for those low number, low damage attacks. Add that one in beforehand. Run through someone, do a wound, hit him again, maybe do a wound, maybe push him back onto a lethal hex. Three possible wounds from a lowly chain rosp could be very telling. Next one is Grasping Thorns. Now this one I've never taken before, but with the prevalence of lethal hexes bouncing around now, that could be very useful in that it's a Briar Queen upgrade. After they make a successful attack, rather than driving them back, you can actually just push them to hexes. So you could boom towards you, you could swing them around you, you could shove them in different directions. More importantly, you could possibly push them through two lethal hexes if the chance arises. So that could be very handy for some extra damage. And then I've also taken Inescapable Vengeance on her. Should I decide to play lengthways or should Robin play lengthways or, you know, offset, then that could be very handy to get her into position. Next is Fameway Crystal, oldie but a goodie. Very handy for jumping on objectives late in the game, which are all over the way over the other side of the board. Sudden Growth, my only restricted card in my upgrades. Minus two move, but plus two wounds. Probably going to go on the Queen with Inescapable Vengeance or Fameway, which doesn't make a difference to your movement speed. And then Quickening Greaves. We, I'm denied about this card when it first came out. We wonder if it's a good card or not. And I guess I'll find out when I play this game. But the possible chance to be able to shift somebody a hex before or after you make that initial roll off or at the end after the final power step could be very handy. Spectral Armor next. I think this is almost a standard in any dodge based deck. Basically get plus one defense if your characteristic is a dodge. Great Fortitude, a must have in most decks. It's going to go on Queen 99% of the time. Possibly Varclav depending on where he is in the grand scheme of things. Plus one wound, always useful. Larval Lance next. Now this one isn't really that defensive at all. It's very offensive in fact, but the chance to give somebody a weapon which might be able to roll three hammers and do three damage on the last round could be very handy. And the last card is Survival Instinct. The fighter is a quarry, and when they're a quarry, they're on guard. Being on guard all the time could be very handy when trying to stand on objectives and not wanting to get pushed around. I can't decide if I prefer this one or if I prefer stone form. Stone form means you can't be pushed. This one means you, as you're on guard, you can't be driven back. Now, if Robin's got any push ploys, that might negate this. But at the same time, if you're just looking to hit people, somebody being on guard all the time could make them a lot more survivable. So there you go, that is my deck. Like I say, I've taken the maximum number of restricted cards, but you know what, if I were going to get rid of any cards, then two of those would be those restricted cards, Pit Trap and Sphere of Akshi, in the favour of more manoeuvrable cards. I'm never going to get rid of Son of Growth, I think that's a great card always to take. Of my objectives, there's a few in there that might be trickier. Possibly take the city, which is stand on all the objectives in one half. It's only one glory, but if I get that early in the game, that should be quite easy for me to pull off. 
keep them guessing I'm never sure on. I should be able to score that one fairly easily. I just don't like the possible chance that I might want to make three or four charges and then I've got to keep them guessing, which means I've got to drop those attacks. But at the same time, I'm going for objectives, so that should be okay. Dug in is possibly the biggest wild card in this deck. If it doesn't come out mid game, I am stuffed because if it comes out late, I might not have enough models. And if it comes out early, then if it comes out round one, obviously, I'm not going to be able to score at all because I won't be on any objectives to start with. But we'll see. We'll see how that gun goes. For the most part, though, I'm quite happy with the rest of the cards I've got. Like I said, total glory score of 20, six surge cards. I quite like this deck. I think it's going to be a fun deck to play, and I'm not looking to win any tournaments with this, although it is the kind of thing that it's balanced enough that I could possibly take to a tournament. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a ridiculously stupid deck? Is it ridiculously good? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Would you make any changes? Are there any cards you definitely wouldn't ever take in here? Are there any cards that you would always take that you're glad to see I've picked? I look forward to hearing your comments. It's always handy to get feedback on these kind of things. It means I can hopefully build even more entertaining decks in the future. Remember that Rob and I do go for entertaining above and beyond competitive all the time because frankly we want to play games we enjoy and we want to play games that you guys are going to find fun to watch. Nobody's going to find it fun if we play the same deck week after week after week. So we'll see you soon in the Beast Grave for a spectacular battle report. There'll be one game on YouTube and then it will be a best of three. So the second and third games will be on Patreon. We'll see you soon in the Beast Grave. Ooh, spooky. Spooky.